forward. Back up. Quick save. All right, guys. So uh, it's the first time I'm going to be doing this. And I kind of wanted to start going live with you guys and create more of a community based uh, thing for Pro GK. So whatever questions you guys have, go ahead and ask me here and uh, I will actually go on my phone so I can get them. Jimmy underscore DiMaggio. What skills really impress you when you look at uh, goalkeepers around the ages of 15, 16 and 17? Uh, Jimmy, honestly, for me, the thing that really stands out when um, I watch those goalkeepers play is obviously um, if it's in a game situation, I just want to see the decision making. I want to see how you are under pressure, um, what you do on crosses, when the ball gets played back to you, how can you scan the field and make the best decision possible for your team and for the time in the game. So if it's the 90th minute and you're trying to play out of the back, your team's up 1-0, that's not going to sit well with me as a coach. I'm going to see that and probably go, okay, the, there's a lack of awareness with this goalkeeper and um, probably scratch you off the list just because at the next level for a head coach, you want to have peace of mind. And if you're doing, you know, doing certain things that put your team under more pressure in you know, tough situations, as a coach, you don't want to have to worry about a goalkeeper doing that. So that's what I would say is obviously have the technical foundation, make sure you have everything sound, all that stuff. But when it comes to decision making and you know, early, early parts of the game, first five minutes of the half, last five minutes of the half, even throughout the half, make sure you're sound, understand uh, what's going on in the game, the flow of the game, and things like that. One, to take chances. What's up, Java? How you doing, man? <laughs> Java always comments, so I just want to give him some love. Uh, for places in the Midwest, this is from Michael Sana 13. For places in the Midwest where training in the winter is very hard to find a field, what can you recommend to do at home to keep your skills sharp? Uh, Michael, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. This is not a question that uh, I'm really privy to because here in California, we have really good weather. So um, when it rains, we cancel our sessions for the field's sake. So I would just maybe say... Uh, if you can find an indoor facility, make that happen. Um, if it's not a possibility, definitely watch as much content as you can on social media, on YouTube especially, and from different coaches and look, watch their coaching styles and see what specifically you can learn from them. I think that's the uh, the biggest tip I can give you because while physically you can't be out there because of the you know weather conditions, if you can get out there and you know sharpen your mind a little bit more and kind of have that muscle memory where you're building. Um, you know, mental recall uh, in your head and understand different techniques and when to use them, things like that. I think that's really going to help you once you step back on the field or watch games on TV, whatever you want to do. One of those two, keep training the mind when physically you might not be able to do that. Vietnam is the best. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ethan, uh, Ethan Oman Cash. Omar, how can I improve top hand saves? Uh, Ethan, honestly, with top hand saves, I think first and foremost, you want to try and understand, like dissect the physical aspect of your game. Are you good at uh, one legged sprawls or like one legged or jumping off one leg and really pushing off that leg? You know, let's say, for example, it's coming, some forward is coming down the left hand side. He cuts into his you know, favored right foot and he wants to put it far post. That comes with two things. One is the awareness to understand, OK, I'm not going to cheat too much. But at the same time, too, I understand that this far post is an option for them. So you want to be able to kind of have that awareness of, okay, I don't want to cheat, but I also, I also when that shot d uh, does come, I want to go. So understanding, okay, pushing off the right leg to my left leg. And once that left leg is isolated, really pushing off and extending yourself. So making sure that when you're in the gym, you do a lot of one-legged stuff, obviously do squats, um, do weighted squats, do um, non-weighted squats if you're not uh, old enough to really add weights to the bar. Um, do a lot of one-legged jumps, uh, box jumps, things like that. So your body has that muscle memory, understands what it feels like to really push off that leg so it's not a surprise. You can really extend and go. But prior to that, you want to put yourself in that good position of you know the forward has their favored right foot or their left foot and that far post curler is on. So making sure that you're not over-anticipating, but at the same time, too, you put yourself in a favorable position if that ball does go to that far post so you can really activate that top hand. Uh, what is the most important in work with goalkeepers? Mickey.gk, M-I-K-I dot G-K. Uh, what is the most important thing with goalkeepers? Honestly, there's so much stuff and I'm even still learning about it as a coach. Um, it's not like, you know, one day you wake up and everything's fine tuned. It's little by little, you start adding different, you know, pieces to your game. So from a young age, definitely have that, having that foundation of, you know, technique and making sure that you understand the right ways to do things so you don't injure yourself. Then secondary to that, and then it comes to decision-making. 
making sure that you are making the right decisions so that you give your teammates, your coach, even yourself peace of mind that you don't uh, overthink certain situations or you don't put your team under more pressure uh, when it doesn't call for it. So really making sure that you understand that. And then the technique and then that decision making gets paired up as you get you know to higher levels where more is asked of you and there's less margin for error. So making sure that you have the, those two fine-tuned at a young age really gets you to the point of, okay, this guy can be somebody we you know take seriously at the next level because you've already fine-tuned the most important aspects of your game. Hopefully that wasn't too wordy, but I think that's the two things that I would say as a coach nowadays that I really look for. Are you technically sound and how are you under pressure and what is your awareness of time of the game? What is your awareness and decision-making? All that stuff. Let's see. Who's the best goalkeeper in the world? Rafita underscore 13 underscore. Uh, I think it's Rafa. Um, for me right now, man, that's a tough one. I would probably have to go with Allison. Um, only because obviously he's on a really good team and his team, I mean, Virgil van Dijk is, you know, Ballon d'Or finalist and people thought he should, he probably should have won. So he already has a very good back for Trent Alexander Arnold, who's amazing as well. Probably the best right back in the world. Um, I just think that he has gotten to the point now where he understands when to take risks and when not to take risks. So last year, obviously, he won uh, the Champions League with Liverpool and then Copa America with Brazil. So I think when it comes to winning things, he has that pedigree now. At the same time, too, he had those early mistakes with Liverpool where he was doing these back heeled you know, things against Leicester City. Leicester City scored a goal on him. He you know, tries to chip somebody when they're on, you know, pressuring him. And I think he's dialed that back a little bit, which I really respect about him because I think he has the awareness to understand, okay, well, if my team is that good and I have these certain skills, I probably shouldn't do that all the time because I don't want to put my team under pressure. And again, that goes back to the awareness, but now he's making the right decisions and taking those risks at the right time. So I think he's really harnessing his technique and really harnessing his best attributes without hurting the team. So I think all in all, shot stopper, he's reliable. He doesn't make many mistakes anymore. Um, I think the reliability, again, guys, that's the number one thing if you take away from this entire episode of this podcast here is making sure that you're a reliable player. You give your coach peace of mind, and that is the number one thing. Because if a coach doesn't have peace of mind with you and doesn't think that you're ready to, to really conquer the position and give him the best chance to win, or give her, him the best chance to win, he's going to pick somebody else. So really make sure that you understand that, and that's why I chose uh, Allison as my best goalkeeper at the moment. Let's see, Kevin underscore Stanton 23. What are some ways to make your distribution better? Uh, Kevin, honestly, man, to anybody who wants to make the distribution better, just go out there and kick tons and tons of balls. I think that's what I did my uh, my my freshman year of college going into my, or my, yeah, my freshman year going into my sophomore year of college that summer. I really, really honed in on just like kicking as many balls as I possibly could until I figured it out. And what I mean by figuring it out is that you start understanding like, you know, what you're supposed to do with your body, how you're supposed to lean back, lean forward, trying to get that backspin on the ball, making sure that you have the right trajectory, the right speed. And, you know, let's say a forward's coming at you, just chipping it over the ball, uh, chipping it over the oncoming forward to your left back, right back, and really understanding how to put the weight on the ball because you're not going to get better at side volleys. You're not going to get better at, you know, distribution out of the back until you um, have that trial and error, until you really iron certain things out let's see cameron dot gut 22 cameron um with goal kicks again uh, any tips on goal kicks yeah same thing guys when you hit goal kicks just make sure at the beginning you try to lean back and just get some height on the ball i remember when i first started taking my goal kicks i obviously they used to put a guy on top of the 18 just because i was hitting it so low and eventually I said, okay, you know, my coach told me, try and just get it to one of our forwards or somebody on the corners. Even if it goes uh, uh, low, it goes out of bounds or defender's foot. So I said, okay, first thing I'm going to start working on is just leaning back a little bit more and getting underneath the ball. So first step first, get underneath the ball first to get it up in the air to try and get it to a right back, center back, or somebody to flick it on. Next thing after that is once you get comfortable getting it up in the air, let's try and find different parts of the field where you can actually start angling your, your body towards and putting it in favorable areas for your team to flick on. And after that, once you have the distance, once you have the position, then you start working on you know weighted balls and putting balls into certain areas that really give your team the best chance to uh, create something from it. So start slow, getting it up in the air first. Secondary after that is making sure you get it to the right area. And last but not least, you start really trying to find pockets where you can play the ball in behind. Let's see. Have you ever played for a team where you don't see any in-game shots? Ethan, again, um, 
Yeah, I've played for some teams like that. I mean, my, my college team, there were some games where we didn't really get that many shots because my defense was so good. So I just had to stay mentally engaged. And I think growing up for me to stay mentally engaged when I didn't get that many shots or much action, it was just communication. So really focusing on understanding, you know, short, concise, direct to the point and making sure that uh, you're in the right positions for pass backs, making sure positional awareness and keeping yourself in the game with communication because you can be exhausted. I mean, I've been exhausted after games when I've been yelling for probably an hour or so and I didn't really get that many shots, but I kept myself into the game with that communication, with that movement, always putting myself into good angles for pass backs. Even though maybe I wasn't going to get them, it kept me engaged and it kept me moving. So that's what I would say, Ethan, is making sure that you don't chase the game, let it come to you. Because as soon as you start trying to get action and create action for yourself, that's when things really start going off the rails. You want to let it come naturally, let it happen organically, and then continue staying engaged with communication and you know positional awareness. And really test yourself with that. I think that's the best thing too is uh, if you don't really have much action, pr- create scenarios or create opportunities for yourself by showing at a better angle and if you don't get to that angle then really take note of that and then do it the next time which is probably going to be in like five minutes in the game things like that so try and create challenges for yourself but not challenges that'll hurt your team uh all right one of my coming to south africa duncan underscore meyer 13 uh duncan uh, i'm not sure when i'm gonna come to south africa if i ever do uh but it sounds like a great opportunity and a great trip so just dm me maybe we can set something up Let's see. Duncan underscore Meyer again. Have you ever dislocated a finger? I dislocated my finger while saving a shot. What do you recommend for rehabilitation? Uh, Duncan, yes, I disloc- I did dislocate my finger. And again, guys, if you haven't noticed, I'm looking at this camera over here because I'm going to post this to YouTube. So if you missed this uh, Q&A, you guys can watch it on YouTube later today. Uh, so... If you're not, if you don't, if you don't see my eyes looking at the uh, camera here, I have my other camera right here. So, um, yeah, Duncan, I actually did. Dis- I actually did dislocate my finger when I was 15. I was training with the Galaxy Academy, and I had the uh, Vapor Grip threes. And the Vapor Grip threes, as you guys know, like the pinky hangs out to the side. And I uh, dove for a ball. I dove backwards. My pinky got stuck in the ground, and I took off my glove, and my 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 pinky finger was dislocated. And right away, they just put some tape on it. My goalkeeper coach came up to the trainer and said, hey, Natasha, can Omar get any worse? And she said, nope. The finger is already put back into place. And he said, okay, Omar, this is when you become a man. You're going to come out here, put some tape on it, just play through it. So I would just say give it some rest if you can. But if you can't, taping it and making sure that it's relocated or relocated, it's put back into place and you have uh, the doctor's permission and everything like that to go back out there, I think that's the best way to do it. Keep icing it. There's not much, I don't think you can rehabilitate towards it. I think you just need to let the swelling go down. So just making sure that uh, the doctor or your team physician, or if you have your own doctor, let them know and see what they say. Maybe you have to tape the you know, the two fingers, the, the, the closest finger to it that's actually healthy. Put those two together so you feel like you still have some strength in it. But that's what I would do. Uh, Gabe Penner, 24. Where can college players play to stay sharp over summer? Uh, Gabe, honestly, I would say if you know any players or let's say, for example, you're from Colorado and you notice that uh, there's like four or five teams, Division One, Division Two, whatever the case may be, and you know that there are certain players that live in Colorado from those teams, um, I would say just on go on social media, I mean, as weird as that may seem sometimes just go on social media hit him up say what's up Omar hey I I noticed you play for this team I'm in Colorado as well let's get you know kick the ball around or do you know anybody uh, that may want to play or train while we have our offseason I think that's the best way to do it because I know some friends here who are all pros and they train in Orange County and they do their thing for uh, I think twice or once a week so at least they stay sharp they have a little community base so try and see uh, which which of those players from those local colleges can uh, get out there with you so that's what I would say Hi from Spain. What's up, Alvarex Z? How can I improve my ability to claim crosses? Braden Blackburn. Uh, Braden, um, honestly, the, the best thing that I've ever heard was when I was probably like 16, I was living in my grandparents' house, and they had a college game on ESPN. And one of the things the commentator said was like, oh, Kevin uh, is claiming crosses like nothing this week or this year because he gained 15 pounds of muscle. And uh, from what he said is that he's more comfortable and confident coming out for those crosses because he's gained so much muscle. And that's what I would tell you guys is that like as weird as that may seem, going into the gym and really just getting stronger and being more comfortable with your body, being able to uh, take hits while you're in the air and being comfortable taking hits in the air, I think that removes that mental block in your head that tells you, okay, I'm not going to come for this ball because of 
you know, a risk of getting hit or uh, just getting, you know, pushed while you're in the air and you might make a mistake that the referee may not call. So I think going into the gym, obviously getting professional help, making sure that they know, you know, for your body time, what you need to do and what your goals are for that. And also strengthening your legs, because I think my timing and my ability on crosses really, really got better when I got stronger with my legs and had uh, confidence jumping off both my feet. So if you can get the left foot and the right foot and doing like single legged uh, box jumps or, you know, uh, side to side jumps, just getting that muscle memory in the legs to really have those like twitch fibers to jump and go. I think those are the two things in the gym and then, you know, strength the single legged stuff, even the two legged stuff as well, making sure those those two things are very sound so that when you do hop back into goal and for crosses that come in, you feel comfortable doing both of those. Okay. Ter Stegen is a legend. Now, I, guys, I'm not saying that Ter Stegen is not one of the best in the world. I do think he is. But right now, I think Allison, uh, there's not really, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say anybody else because he's won everything and he's been consistent. And uh, when you don't hear about somebody, guys, that's the biggest thing. When you don't hear about a goalkeeper doing much, I think that's good. I say no news is good news. Uh, with De Gea, he's in the news constantly because of situations that uh, we know he's making mistakes. And when we don't hear about him, it's because they won. So I think that's the best thing. And that's why Allison is doing so well. When we don't hear about him, I think, uh, and they're winning, <laughs> I think that's the, the biggest thing. So respect to Ter Stegen, respect to you know other goalkeepers around the world. But right now, for me, at the moment, Allison's the guy. Any knee prevention, knee strengthening advice? Ethan, honestly, guys, I'm not a doctor. So uh, I and I, when I tore my ACL when I was 22, I didn't have to rush back. I didn't have to play anymore. So I took my time, and that's when my knee uh, had time to heal. So I wouldn't tell you guys to rush anything back, but definitely go. I, I think YouTube is one of the best sources of inf uh, information when it comes to uh, rehabilitation or just advice on anything, whether it's goalkeeping technique, uh, rehabbing a knee, rehabbing a dislocated finger, uh, all that stuff. I would say YouTube is a place to go. And if you have more resources, go to a doctor and ask them what their you know tips are or a, phys a physical assistant or somebody to get you that physical therapy to get back to where you need to be. K Gertowski underscore 17. I'm four foot 11. How do I improve my high dives? Uh, Again, you guys, it comes down to strengthening the legs and really um, just enhancing the lower part of your body. If you're naturally springy, great for you. That's why Nick Romando and Barthez, all those guys were so good because they may not have had the height, but they had uh, different qualities to really um, compensate for the lack of height. So strengthening the legs, putting yourself in plyometric exercises that really get your foot into the ground and back out quickly. That's the important stuff. So that's what I would do. Have that awareness. Go on YouTube, find a doctor, find a sports physician and have them create um, sessions around, you know, things that you want to work on. Mo underscore Mamuhaji underscore. Um, how do small goalkeepers respond to criticism about their height? And what is the main thing we should work on? Uh, Mo again, you know, answering uh, Gertowski's question. When it comes to height and issues with height for coaches, at least whether it's crosses or whatever they may think that you aren't good at because of your height, you need to be somebody that checks all those boxes. So obviously, as a shorter goalkeeper, there's no excuse for you not being good with your feet. There's no excuse for you not being good with crosses. There's no excuse for you not being good at positional awareness, communication, all that stuff. You have to be that and much more. But when it comes to crosses, especially, especially on, on shot stopping as well, because you need to cover as much as somebody who's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you should be able to because of your positional awareness. But when it also comes down to is the crossing. If crossing is something that you lack and you're not good at, that is, you're just, you're, just, you're just checking the box for the coach. You're just saying, all right, well, I knew he wasn't going to be good at crosses, so I'm not surprised. You need to be able to say, okay, have the awareness to st take a step back and say, okay, what is it about my game that coaches are, are highlighting and saying that I'm not good at? Okay, I'm not good at crosses. Okay, let's take, you know, reverse engineer this. What can help me with my crosses? Getting bigger in the gym, strengthening my legs so I'm more springy. Okay, perfect. Now you already have the notes you need. You go to the gym, you go to a doctor, you go to somebody to create a program for you. Once they've created that program, you go all in on that. So now when you step into a, a session or when you step into a trial, these coaches are saying, okay, uh, Omar is maybe like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but oh my God, he is un amazing at timing his crosses. He's amazing at really sprawling across the goal and making himself big and making these top hand saves where somebody who's 6'2", six, 6'3", six, they're also doing that, but I like his game a little bit more. So as a shorter goalkeeper, it's not the end of the world. Sure, there are coaches who have biases, 
but you need to start reverse engineering what it is that they're crossing you off their list for and making sure that you fill those boxes, not even just like to 100%, 125, 130%. So there's no, there's no doubt left. And were there, will there be situations where you cover all those, uh, check all those boxes and the coaches still don't uh, put you in? Sure. But at the same time too, you want to make sure that you cover everything. So at least you're giving yourself the best chance possible. Okay. How do I improve my lower dives? That is uh, underscore Ali Zango. Uh, lower dives, guys, is just a ton of repetition, making sure that you're understanding that when you dive, you're diving on your lats right here and you can extend and really slide out. I think that's super important to making sure that you're comfortable and your body has that quick trigger to, okay, well, we already know how to get low, whether it's going underneath a rope or whatever in training. We already know how to get low in the shortest time uh, possible. So when you're asking us to do this, uh, I'm speaking as your body here, when you're asking us to do this, Omar, in the game, we're, we're already comfortable, we already know how to do this. So what I would say is get some rope, maybe like four feet or three feet off the ground, making sure that you have, if you have you know, solo training or you have someone to train with you, just getting low, sinking into the ground, and then once that shot is taken to really extend and slide on those lats, just so you get more comfortable with it. And that's the important thing is you need to simulate a lot of game situations. And especially like I just talked about with gym workouts or getting more push off your legs for a shorter goalkeeper is reverse engineer, pretty much understand what your goal is and then go back from there. Try and figure out what are this, what would be the steps to get to your goal. And then from there, you're going to have way more clarity and way more vision, uh, understanding what it needs to uh, or what you need to do to get to that point. Blake dot uh, H-Y-L-T-O-N. Where did you play? Uh, I mean, I played for the LA Galaxy Academy growing up, and then from there I went to UC Davis. Uh, after UC Davis, I definitely wanted to go pro. Like I was, I, I felt like I wanted to, but physically and like mentally, I just didn't have it in me anymore. Um, I ended up tearing my ACL like right after as well. So it just that coupled with me tearing my ACL uh, kind of just set me back, and I just wasn't ready to to go all in on it. So I said, okay, what else can I do? A year later, I started Pro GK. So I think everything worked out for the best because I'm still involved in the game, and I really do try. Like I love helping people with uh, goalkeeping because I I feel like there isn't enough people doing it. So it all worked out for me in the end. Uh, Max dot blacker, uh, uh, Max underscore blacker tips for key points of communication when playing. Uh, Max, I would just say when it comes to communication, everyone has their own words. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, if you're the starting goalkeeper and you're getting a lot of minutes, it's just that same terminology, the same words that you use with your teammates. So that's why it's more comfortable to have a, a consistent starter because um, you guys are all on the same page. But for me, it's, you know, I usually say I'm on for passbacks uh, because it just shows them or it gives the, the defender an idea of the picture that I'm trying to paint for them behind them. Like I'm on and if I'm, you know, uh, showing at a good angle and the forward sees that, they're going to cheat on to me and that's going to give my you know defender an extra second or two to either play the ball up or turn and play it back to me. I like to say the word shape a lot. Uh, when we're defending or it's a counterattack or where they're swinging the ball around and I say shape, it usually means block of eight. So everybody from my center backs, my right backs, everybody forms into a block of eight, my center midfielders, all those guys. So I say shape a lot. Uh, So shape, I'm on. Uh, I say step up. I mean, it's very basic, but that's like, that's what I say. I say step. I don't say it too often. I just say step once or twice because the more you say it, the and more annoying it gets for a forward or for a uh, defender. So keep it short and concise because one thing I learned from my college go- uh, college coach this uh, this year was that you know you only have so many times where you can say something that has meaning. And what I mean by that is that in a game, your defenders or your teammates they're doing so much to protect the goal, and if you keep on barking orders, barking orders, eventually they're going to just you know t- uh, tune you out. They're not going to listen to you anymore. So you want to make sure that when you have something important to say or when you need to get their attention, you haven't lost their attention by yelling nonsense the entire game. So you want to try and keep everything short, concise, to the point with substance and making sure that you really try and hold that one or two, uh, one or two barking of orders so that at least you have their attention versus you're just screaming your head off for no reason and they're like, okay, screw this guy, we're done. What are your opinions on De Gea, Ryan underscore Everhart underscore uh, Ryan at the moment, I mean, De Gea is just just one of those guys who was at the top of the game. Everybody loved him. Um, but little by little, I don't know what it is, whether it's his time at Man United or uh, what, it, what it could be. But after the World Cup last year, even in the World Cup, 
there were times where like he just did not look like himself. He bounced back every once in a while, but I think for some reason he gets to the point where he's like, okay, I'm going to bounce back. And then he takes his foot off the gas after one or two really good games. And I don't know if that's uh, Ole or like the goalkeeper coaches there who aren't keeping uh, keeping him sharp. But at the same time, at that high of a level, he needs to take some responsibility. And I think at the moment, he's not where he needs to be to be in consideration for the top goalkeeper in the world. Nor is he where he needs to be for Manchester United to be successful. I mean, yesterday against uh, Newcastle, didn't have to do much. They won four one, I think, and he maybe had to make one or two saves at most. And he did well. I mean, that's uh, again, like I said about Allison, when you don't hear about somebody, it means they won or they did well. So I think for for his sake, if he can be more consistent, just make the right moves, right <laughs> right saves. Like, I forget who it was against. I mean, this past week, he made that mistake. The ball slipped right through his hands against Watford. And it's like, that's so not like him. But now it's becoming like him because he keeps consistently making those same mistakes, whether it's a lack of judgment, lapse, lapse of concentration, whatever it is. But I think as long as he starts making more consistent plays and not errors, I think that's where he gets uh, De Gea back. Um, All right, guys. So we're closing in right now on 30 minutes. I'm pretty far back on some of these questions. Uh, So I'm just going to probably going to end this in the next like 20 seconds here. So um, again, guys, this is my first time doing this. If you didn't catch the podcast or the Instagram live now, you guys can catch it on my uh, podcast, which is uh, Pro GK Podcast. It is on Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that. Uh, if you haven't checked out my Instagram, all that stuff, check it out. Guys, my name is Omar Zini. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.